Welcome to another Fold It Lab report. I am BCAP, still recording this from home with my colleague Ian H. We are still trying to avoid the lab as much as possible while we wait for our turn to get the coronavirus vaccine. If this is your first time discovering these lab reports, we publish these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science behind Fold It. Today, I wanna to start by talking about influenza. In February, we started a brand new challenge to design binders for an influenza protein called hemagglutinin. Hemagglutinin is a protein found on the surface of influenza virus particles. Like the spike protein on the coronavirus, hemagglutinin is responsible for recognizing and binding receptors on human cells. Hemagglutinin is a big protein with a head region and a stem region. The head region is where binding happens. So you could think about designing a protein that binds to the head region and stops it from recognizing and infecting human cells. In fact, this is how your immune system normally defends against the influenza virus, by raising antibody proteins that can bind to this head region and neutralize the virus. Every time the virus copies itself, there's a chance that new mutations will crop up. This is much more likely in influenza than, for example, coronavirus, which mutates much more slowly. This fast mutation rate allows influenza to evade your immune system more easily than other viruses. That's why you have to get a new flu vaccine every year. Even if you've already had the flu and your immune system has already raised antibodies to block it, the next time you encounter the virus, chances are there will be some new mutations that could render it unrecognizable to your already existing antibodies. So far, we've only talked about the head region of the hemagglutinin protein, but what about the stem? The stem does not have a binding site for human cells, but it still plays an important role during infection. After the head region binds to a human cell, the hemagglutinin stem snaps open and stabs itself into the membrane of the target cell. A protein drug that binds to the stem could prevent it from snapping open. Fortunately, the stem of hemagglutinin also mutates at a much lower rate than the head. That means that if we had a protein that binds to the stem, we could use it against influenza year after year, even while the head is mutating. We'd like to design a protein binder like this in Foldit. This is a challenging binder design problem. The stem region of the protein does not normally bind to anything, so its surface is very polar, chemically speaking. It does not offer many hydrophobic patches, which are the sticky handholds we look for when designing good binders. And in fact, all of those polar atoms at the surface means we need to be very careful about creating buns with our protein binder. And there's another complication. The surface of hemagglutinin is hidden away under a thick layer of sugar molecules. In other words, it's glycosylated. Glycans are big sugar polymers that are sometimes found on the surface of proteins. In humans, glycans can act as a sort of I'm human identifier for the protein to keep it from being attacked by the body's own immune system. Of course, the influenza virus has adapted and it disguises its proteins by attaching the same I'm human glycans to its own proteins. The problem for us is, since glycans are so large, they obscure the protein surface and that makes it even more difficult for us to design binders that can stick to the hemagglutinin stem. And so, for our first puzzle update, we are challenging you to design binders for the influenza hemagglutinin protein. These puzzles present a section of the stem region as the protein target, and they also include a stub of the glycan that we need to avoid. It's going to be very difficult to design binding interactions close to the glycan without creating buns, so you'll need to pay close attention to this part of the protein. And remember, the key to making a great binding interface is to bury lots of orange hydrophobic side chains at the binding interface. Since the surface of the stem is mostly blue polar side chains, this is going to be, again, very difficult to do without creating buns. In our second puzzle update, we have more designable linker puzzles. The goal of these puzzles is to join two smaller proteins into a single continuous proteins, but we have to keep the original orientations of these two starting proteins. In February, we introduced a puzzle with a new set of proteins that bind to the coronavirus spike protein. One of these is the LCB binder that was designed here at the Institute for Protein Design. The other is a protein that mimics the human receptor that is naturally targeted by the coronavirus spike. 
This mimetic uses the same interactions as when the spike binds natural human proteins. It doesn't bind as tightly as our LCB designs, but it should still bind even when mutations appear in future coronaviruses. A protein that links the mimetic and the LCB design could serve as a highly sensitive therapeutic or diagnostic tool that should work regardless of future coronavirus mutations. In our third puzzle update, we saw some brand new electron density puzzles this month. In this kind of puzzle, we are trying to fold up a protein into the correct shape, and we have some experimental data that can help guide us. This data comes from X-ray crystallography or cryo-electron microscopy experiments. These data are in the form of a 3D map, or cloud, which suggests the shape of the folded protein. These puzzles are all about trying to fold up the protein into a plausible shape that fits neatly into the electron density cloud. Even expert scientists can have a lot of difficulty with this, especially when the map is at a low resolution and the cloud looks especially blobby. Sometimes we see signs of inaccuracies in published protein structures. It could just be that the underlying data is poor, but there could also be errors from when the scientists tried to fit structures into the experimental data. We like to present these puzzles to you in Folded to see if you can fold up a structure better than the scientists. We'd like to improve the electron density capabilities of Folded, so you can expect more puzzles like this in the future. And that brings us to our design of the month. This month we have a design from user Galaxy in puzzle 1950, two-sided interface design. We have two proteins that we are trying to link together, but as different chains. So unlike the designable linker puzzles, these two need to remain separate chains that will bind to one another and associate in solution. Unlike other binder design puzzles, uh, both of these proteins are design proteins, so we have control over both sides of this interface. Um, so what we see here is that Galaxy has built up a very nice four helix bundle that packs right up against the other protein here and forms lots of nice well-packed orange hydrophobic contacts. So all of these all of these contacts here uh, should make for very, very tight binding. These orange hydrophobics, they like to be buried away from water. Um, so when we have these two proteins apart in solution with all of the interface residues exposed, they will be unstable and they will much prefer to come together so that these orange residues can be buried. What I like about this protein is that this interface seems to be very well packed. There's good interdigitation between the side chains on each chain. And both of these proteins now look like they have reasonable amino acids. So there's still plenty of blue side chains on the outside and a nice hydrophobic well-packed core even on this individual protein. One thing I think that we'll want to be careful of, especially in future puzzles, is having interfaces that are maybe too hydrophobic. So if we think about what these proteins would look like uh, in solution before they come together, um, then we see that there's actually a lot of exposed hydrophobic residues when these proteins are unbound. Um, and that could cause these proteins to maybe misbehave. They might not fold up correctly or they could misfold. You see that this uh, one helix that normally forms right in the middle of this binding site um, its surface is almost completely hydrophobic. So, right, this helix is composed of entirely hydrophobic residues. So if this helix does fold, it will form a very, very tight binding interface with its target over here. But we're worried that this protein might not fold properly with all of these hydrophobic residues, or it could aggregate with other things in the cell. So I think in future puzzles, we will probably see hydrogen bond networks or some other, some other objectives to try and encourage a better or more even distribution of blue polar residues and orange hydrophobic residues at the surface. But again, this is a excellent protein design from Galaxy. I think we will see some more of these two-sided interface design puzzles coming up. Remember to share your favorite designs with scientists. We are always interested to see what your favorite designs are. That's all we have for this month. In March, you can look forward to Office Hours with Scooper and NeilPG628. 
As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next month.